Okay, welcome back, guys. Our next book is called Katie Meets the Impressionists, also by James Mayhew, same author as Katie Meets the Mona Lisa. So, or sorry, that was Katie and the Mona Lisa. Anyways, let's get on with our story, shall we? Katie Meets the Impressionists. It was Grandma's birthday, and for a special treat, she took Katie to the art museum. Katie loved the museum because you never knew what you were going to see there. Look at the flowers in the painting, said Grandma. I can only see spots, said Katie. The pictures are made up of dabs of paint and color, said Grandma. But when you stand back, the dabs make a picture. Katie wandered off into the next room to try. There she saw a painting called The Luncheon by Claude Monet. When she stood back, Katie could see a garden. Grandma would love flowers like those for her birthday, she thought. She closed her eyes and sniffed. She was sure she could smell the flowers. And when Katie opened her eyes, there she was among the daisies, hollyhocks, roses, and sunflowers. Can I pick some flowers? said Katie to the little boy, whose name was John. John called his mother and nanny over and spoke to them in French. Un bouquet, said his mother. Oui, Jean, you go and help the girl. So John and Katie gathered flowers together. Are you going to paint them? he asked. No, they're for my grandma, said Katie. Papa paints flowers, said John. I'll show you. John took Katie to a room full of pictures like a small gallery. This is Papa's studio, he said. He's a famous painter. His name is Claude Monet. I'm good at painting, said Katie. Let's try it. Using brushes, they mixed the paint on palettes and found canvases to paint on. They painted portraits of each other using dabs, just like real painters. Now I'd better get back to Grandma, said Katie, and they went out into the garden. Will you come another day, asked John. I'd like to, said Katie. She picked up the bunch of flowers and, waving goodbye, climbed through the frame into the museum. Katie saw that the bunch of flowers was beginning to wilt. What I need is some water, she said, looking around the gallery. She saw a painting called Girl with Watering Can by Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Katie looked around to make sure no one was watching her and climbed inside. Can I have some water for my flowers, said Katie. The little girl put the flowers into her watering can. Voila, she said, but the flowers still drooped and flopped over. Hmm. Come and pick some more, said the girl. So Katie and the girl trampled through the garden picking flowers. Katie pretended it was a jungle and that she was a panther chasing the girl. Suddenly there was a terrible scream. It was the girl's mother. You have ruined my garden, she shouted. It wasn't me, said the girl. It was her, and she pointed at Katie. Come here, you naughty child, said the mother. But Katie ran for the picture frame and leapt into the museum, leaving the flowers scattered behind her. Ooh. Katie sighed. She didn't dare go back to fetch the flowers. She went to look at the other pictures. There were a lot of pictures by Monet. Katie looked at one called Field of Poppies. Wasn't that John, the painter's son, walking through the field? Katie climbed in to see. It was John. He was delighted to see her. We're going on a picnic, he said, and John's mother said that Katie could join them. They walked together through the poppy field looking for somewhere to sit. John helped Katie gather armfuls of poppies for Grandma. Can you
you guys might have noticed some of these red flowers around Austin right now, too. We have the same red poppies here in Austin, and they're blooming right now. So pretty. Afterward, they sat in the shade of the tree, the perfect place for a picnic. Mrs. Monet opened a bag. She had bread and cheese and strawberries. But John heard a buzzing noise and looked up. A black cloud of bees was flying towards them. They're after my poppies, shouted Katie, her mouth full of strawberries. John and his mother ran toward the poppy field, but Katie ran to the picture frame and dived back into the museum. My goodness, here we go. The bees followed Katie, who ran on and on until she reached a window. She flung it open and threw the poppies out. The bees flew after them. Katie panted <sighs> until she got her breath back. She still didn't have any flowers for Grandma. She saw another picture by Pierre Auguste Renoir. It showed a girl at the theater and was called Her First Evening Out. This girl was holding a posy of flowers. Grandma would love a posy like that, said Katie, before jumping into the picture. <clears throat> May I have your flowers? asked Katie. I'll swap my hair ribbon. Hush, said the girl. The ballet is about to begin. Katie looked for a seat, but they were all full. The theater manager appeared. Mademoiselle, may I see your ticket, he said. Katie didn't have one, so she ran off down some steps. She could hear the manager coming after her, so she opened a door to hide and stumbled upon some people in bright costumes. When they started shouting at her, she ran the other way toward some bright lights and the sound of music. Katie pushed past the heavy velvet curtains and found herself on stage. The dancers held their breath. So did the musicians in the orchestra. So did the audience. What was Katie going to do? Katie danced. The music started up again and Katie pranced all around the stage. How the audience loved her. They had never seen anyone dance like that before. They cheered and clapped and threw flowers. Hundreds of flowers fell upon Katie as she twirled around. Well done, they shouted. Bravo! When the music stopped, Katie curtsied and gathered up her flowers. The manager rushed over to hear, My dear, you have such talent. Katie blushed. I just jumped around a bit, really, she said. You must dance every night. You will be famous, said the manager. Thanks, but it's Grandma's birthday, said Katie. I must get back. But Katie could not find her way to the picture frame. There were people everywhere changing costumes. She was afraid she might be stuck in the theater picture forever. All of a sudden, she saw another frame. I must be in another picture, said Katie. She gathered up her bouquet and climbed into the museum. Katie looked back at the picture, The Blue Dancers by Edgar Degas, she read. I wonder if I would have been painted if I had stayed still long enough, she said. Then Katie ran over to her grandma and gave her the flowers. Happy birthday, grandma! My goodness, said Grandma, wherever did you get these lovely flowers? Katie just laughed. But what was that in her pocket? A paintbrush? Monet will need that, she thought. She ran back to the first picture, left the brush on the frame, and then ran to catch up with her grandma. All right. The end. So I hope you enjoyed this book and remember to wash your hands, sing the alphabet song while you're washing so you get that soap on there for a real long time, play outside safely away from other people and read books 
and I can't wait to see you guys again soon. I really do miss you. This is pretty boring. I mean, our house is fun and all, but it's not as much fun as you guys. So take care of yourselves. Be safe. Be healthy. Love you guys. Miss you. Bye.